parts of that area called uh, in this moment or in the few hours to come, about two hours to come. That is definitely information that you won't have on hand. In our Kickstarter this morning, we're going to be looking at the International Day of the Girl Child that is commemorated on the 11th of October every single year. Celebrated under different themes <coughs> each year, you do have the International Day of the Girl Child creating opportunities for stakeholders to actually reflect on the progress registered towards addressing the issues concerning the girl child, especially as far as Uganda is concerned and Africa by and large. Now this year's theme globally is invest in girls' rights. We're looking at the leadership and the well-being of the girl child. I do have pundits that are experts and have actually been uh, very, very instrumental in this conversation and implementation levels and also oversight levels uh, that have been able to progressively register some success in ensuring that girls get equal rights or even their own rights are actually observed, adhered to and implemented and advocated for, uh, for that matter. Let me start from my extreme left. Uh, we do have the gentleman joining us, Mr. Golova Rogers, who is representing the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, good morning. You're most welcome. Yeah, he comes to us under the capacity of a senior probation and welfare officer, and so he'll be in a good position to give us an accountability of how things are moving so far on the side of government. Next to him, we do have a girl child advocate, Madame Celestine Mujeni, who's an advocate with Plan International. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. And of course, from Plan International in the Uganda, we do have Fatia Atugonza. She's the technical advisor, and that is gender and inclusion. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Okay. So let me start from government. Who is the overseer uh, of this uh, particular mission that we have as a country to ensure that we observe uh, girls' initiatives and girls' rights are advocated for? When we look at the progress so far, could you give us an accountability on the progress that we have registered the milestones that we have achieved as a country in actually addressing the issues patent to girls. Uh, thank you, moderator, and uh, good morning, viewers and TV viewers. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that um, the first and uh, most uh, important area that government has really invested in, which is the bedrock for the attainment of all human rights in Uganda, I think is the peace and stability, because without peace, uh, without stability, then everything that we talk about rights, be it human rights, be it uh, children rights, be it girls rights and women rights cannot be attained. In a situation where there is war, for example what is going on around the world, you can really see in countries like Ukraine, like in the Middle East, like in, uh, uh, in parts of Sudan, there are gross rights violations. Schools cannot, cannot open, mm -hmm. uh, health uh, facilities cannot open, uh, you cannot guarantee people's safety when they're outside. So I think the first and most important credibility or attainment or achievement of government is ensuring that there has been stability and peace over the years. Mm -hmm. And that is the bedrock on which now we can begin talking about the right to education, the right to survive and health, uh, the right to protection, and the right to participation. Okay. Uh, if we look at uh, the right to survive and protection, survival and health, we have, uh, over the past seven years, in a few months back, we got the Uganda National Dem Demographic Health Survey results out, and we made commendable progress in reducing infant mortality, reducing child mortality, reducing maternal mortality. We've improved uh, our access uh, by mothers to safe deliveries from around 74 to 91%. We've had a reduction in stunting from the 27 to 24.4%. So we've uh, increased infrastructure in health, that is having more health center threes, more health center twos, we recruited a lot of health workers, and the budget to primary health care has also significantly improved over the years. So when we talk about primary health care, that's where the entire package for immunization is. Our immunization rates again are increasing, although overall percentage of children and the one who have achieved all the immunization by age one has reduced a bit. But we know that over the past two years also we've had challenges, uh, for example, COVID-19. Our epidemic control strategies are working well. We're able to contain uh, Ebola. Mm -hmm. We've been able to contain other virus uh, that have uh, 
are emerging the country. So on the health front, we've seen uh, a big improvement. And uh, education, again through UPE, USE, we've had uh, a leap in access for our girls and boys. For example, UPE alone from 2.1 million to around 10.8 million. Mm -hmm. For our USE, uh, Uganda uh, secondary education, again the numbers are increasing. Uh, we have two particular projects that government has been implementing through the U-Gift. We've constructed uh, secondary schools, primary schools. Currently, 92% of our parishes have a primary school. 70% <coughs> of our sub-counties have a secondary school. Mm -hmm. There, are, there is a government university in every region, and at least 66% of all districts have a vocational school. So we see that in terms of access uh, to education, access to skills, uh, development, for in-school and out-of-school, through the presidential initiative on scaling the girl and boy child, we've seen uh, our girls and boys getting skills in tailoring, hairdressing skills that can enable them to employ themselves look at the right to protection, again we've strengthened uh, our protection services through the Uganda police, through the justice and order sector. And just uh, I think yesterday you saw that uh, the office of the DPP recruited over 100 state attorneys mm -hmm. and all this help us in addressing uh, some of the uh, legal issues uh, that our children especially our girls face, because we know that GBV is uh, one of the key uh, child rights violations or girls rights violations that exist. We have, uh, in the past year, 2022, for example, recorded over 12,580 <coughs> cases of defilement. Mm. And over 12,300 of these have been, uh, the victims have been girls. So we still have uh, that big challenge. Okay. If you look at the right to participation, again, the spaces available in school and out of school for girls to be able to share out their views, to be able to engage with decision makers. We have reporting platforms like the U Report, like the Saudi 116, um, where girls like SafePal, where girls and young women and boys can be able to identify and report cases of violence in communities, in schools, and many others. So I believe. Uh, that there's a lot that has been done. Okay. All right. Uh, turning to Plan International as an implementing partner and non-governmental side, uh, in your work with the, the girl child here in Uganda, what have you observed in terms of uh, what uh, Minister Golova has shared in regards to actually enhancing and aiding the rights of the girl child uh, to be respected and adhered to in Uganda? Okay, thank you very much. Um, good morning, our viewers. Uh, uh, in regard to that as plan, first of all, um, we work with government closely. That's the first thing, we work with government because we realize we, we are complementing each other so we don't work in isolation. So um, we go ahead to do assessments to identify what are the key issues affecting our girls, but also go ahead to build the capacities of the girls themselves to make sure that they advocate for these issues as girls themselves. So we look at not ourselves presenting these cases because um, every time we present these cases, I think the policymakers and um, uh, people in authority may not understand what exactly is happening. So what happens is for us to build the capacities of the girls to make sure that they are able to uh, present these cases. So we look at, like we now have this girl activist. So we have so many of this kind, so who are able to um, advocate and present their issues at different levels. So we invest a lot around um, quality education and inclusive education, of course, right from uh, early childhood uh, education involvement places, uh, primal and also uh, those other levels. So our purpose is to make sure that we have uh, girls enrolled in school, but also are retained to be able to complete, because uh, if you look at our reports, uh, reports indicate like we have um, girls who are able to complete primary seven about 53%. Mm -hmm. 
but when it comes to second we all see only 22. That number reduces. Yes, the number reduces. Yeah. So there are a number of uh, factors around why the girls are not able to enroll for secondary. Yeah. Things like uh, Mr. Rogers said, things to do with gender-based violence, things to do with forced marriages, because there are a number of factors, of course, building we'll up get into all the these. Factors yes, later on. Yeah. yeah. So we work with uh, different stakeholders on issues of strengthening child protection uh, issues, just like he said, the issues of GBV, sexual abuse and harassment, and so on. So we identify and work with others, police, uh, other CSOs, and government as well to make sure that these uh, issues are well handled at different levels. All right. Yes. Uh, let me talk to Celestine here, who, who's uh, the girl child advocate. You have had the privilege of, you know, going through this yourself. Yes. And so we want to hear what's your side of the story. What's the reality for you and the fellow girls that you represent this morning? Okay. Thanks you. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, good morning, our dear viewers. As we commemorate the International Day of a Girl Child, uh, this day, uh, to us as girls, it really reminds the citizens globally that girls really matter. Because sometimes we are, we, we are really left behind. But on a day like this, even the parents, the community will come to understand that we really matter as girls and young women. Uh, on top of that, it really reminds girls of their role and their worth in the community. Mm -hmm. That we are not just here as girls, but we really have a role to play uh, to contribute to the well-being of the country and the communities we live in. Uh, it really creates a big platform for us girls and young women to continue advocating for our rights and not to only stop here where we are but to go international because we are being celebrated internationally this is so big for us and another thing is on a day like this we hold our leaders accountable yes on issues that will affect us because as today we are having a government official this is really good for us because he will really take up our issues mm -hmm. yes okay all right uh, you have spoken of violations what are those violations that you have experienced on a personal level uh, on a personal level i was a victim of gbv and and as a result of of lack of esteem i didn't come up to say out my story and didn't get help as a girl and young woman but later on as we were joined by plan uh, it really brought up it ca with capacity building mm -hmm. and I was really brought up with this confident thing and I can now stand up and say out my story without fear. Mm -hmm. And this brings uh, like, it creates more space for other girls who are facing the same to stand out and say what they're really experiencing and find help in any uh, in any way or the other. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Now, Mr. Golova, let's focus on the day itself. It's uh, being commemorated tomorrow. A big question is uh, what's the background and what's the significance of this day? Yeah, this day was uh, started in uh, 2011 after a resolution of the United Nations. Uh, considering the challenges and adversities that girls go through uh, globally. So the issues that we're discussing here are not only issues for Uganda, but are issues that are faced by girls everywhere. When we talk about school dropout, when we talk about child marriages, teenage pregnancies, and all these things that girls face, uh, they are global issues. And uh, the United Nations saw it fit uh, to have a special day to be able to reflect on what government has done, what other stakeholders are doing to be able to address those issues. Mm -hmm. But kind of also give it a platform for the girls to be able to discuss these issues um, among themselves and see how they can take lead in addressing some of the barriers to their overall progress. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very important day for us. Uh, over the years we've celebrated it. Uh, we've had uh, a number of things that are being done, a number of memoranda that we have got from girls on some of the priorities that they think government should invest in a number of new programs and projects targeting girls empowerment have been launched over the years. Okay. And we believe that this is a very, very important day all right. for all girls everywhere uh, to be able to uh, commemorate. All right. Uh, Ms. Fatia, with the Plan International, what are your particular interests in commemorating the International Day of the Girl Child? And exactly what are your areas of focus for 2023? Okay, thank you very much. Um, of course, when you talk about Plan, Everybody will just automatically know you're talking about girls, mm -hmm. girls, children. So uh, for us as plan, our work is, uh, is actually mandated around empowering girls and so on. So we um, derive our mandate right from um, 
two international conventions. So one is uh, the Convention on Rights of Children, and then the other one is the Convention on Elimination of uh, All Forms of Discrimination Against Women and Girls. So that one automatically gives us the purpose for this day and why actually we have to invest it in it a lot. So our work strongly looks at issues around gender-based violence, and of course we realize that um, the issues of gender-based violence, the issues of discrimination, the issues of inequality fall mostly among the girls and young women. So we work to address such issues, and of course our target is always between the age of zero to 24 years. So we look at how do we support our girls, how do we empower them, how do we build the capacities of these girls to make sure that they are able to advocate for their issues. So when you look at these issues, of course, there are issues that are happening in our communities. And of course, we don't want to say it's the main perpetrating, but of course, we post indicate that. So <coughs> what we do mostly is to make sure that we work with men and boys to make sure that we have a transformed community. But we can only have that if we work closely with men and boys. So why we invest a lot as planning this for us to celebrate our girls' activists. Mm -hmm. So because we realize that they've achieved a lot around activism, they've been able to present, represent fellow girls at different levels, like we already have this one, but like I've said, we already have more others. So our purpose is to make sure that we celebrate this achievement of what the girls are going through, what they're able to do as activists. Mm -hmm. But also we acknowledge that even when they're doing this work as activists, they face a lot of challenges. They have issues of, uh, you know, as being girls, but also as young girls. So they have issues of gender and social norms in the communities where they're coming from. So we want to celebrate that. We have to acknowledge that, but also have to show our support because that's where our, our mandate sits as plan. Okay, all yes. right. Celestine, as an activist in this capacity, yes. uh, representing so many girls and activists, what are those things that you want to highlight as um, things you celebrate on this International Day of the Girl Child and achievements that you have registered as activists. Okay, thank you. And as girls and young women on the International Day of the Girl Child, uh, we come to realize that we are really determined to carry on campaigns that create change. And in this, we believe that in a collective effort, we are going to get a reachable goal that we really want as girls and young women. And when you look at activism, we don't look at this as a one-day thing. With advocacy, it becomes part of you, and you become part of it, then you're one. And we look at this as a life's work. And as advocates, we believe that we can no, we can influence public opinions, yes, and, ch and challenge these uh, negative gender norms that rotate around the girls and young women. And we believe that we can also influence policies, uh, the uh, policy reforms that create a better world for us as girls and young women. Um, on a day like this, we are given opportunities as, as girls and young women to speak up on issues affecting us, right from the communities uh, to the national level. And uh, on a day like this we believe that uh, when we stand up as girls and young women on a, with a collective if uh, uh, with a collective voice uh, when we speak out we shall be heard and uh, and something will be done on our issues okay all right um, now we want to turn our attention to the year 2023 I know that there's a, se uh, a theme that we must uh, celebrate under so we want to find out from you mr. Golova what's the theme for 2023 and what's the significant directly to Uganda. This, this year's theme for the International Day of the Girl is uh, investing in girl, girls' rights, our leadership and well-being. It gives us an opportunity as government of Uganda to reaffirm our commitment to girls, uh, to our national development plan, to our vision 2040. We cannot really attain all those key development aspirations if we really don't uh, invest in girls. So we're doing a review of the key strategic areas or key performance indicators that we have uh, for girls. I already mentioned, for example, on uh, uh, some headline priorities under mat reproductive maternal, adolescent and child health, under education, under, under social protection. Uh, but it also gives us uh, an opportunity to also affirm our commitment to achievement or attainment of Africa's Agenda 2063, which is a world fit for children. Now uh, we have all those key uh, indicators on safety and security, on uh, health, uh, that is really important. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for us to see how far we are going <coughs> in 
building uh, the capacity of girls because they are they, they are they are central mm. in uh, all our human capital development interventions that we have. Mm. We are big uh, uh, pro a proportion of our national population and giving them uh, the empowerment through education, through skills, to be able to contribute to national development mm -hmm. is really one of the major focus areas for Uganda. Okay. So if girls are getting married early, we are really losing that productivity. If girls are dropping out of school due to a number of reasons that are actually avoidable, we are losing the investment that government has already made in terms of uh, the school facilitation grants that they are giving, the teachers that they are paying to be in school and teaching them, the infrastructure that is being uh, expanded, so we really, really uh, make that loss. Mm -hmm. So it's a day that uh, gives us an opportunity to engage with girls and see uh, what are some of the challenges that are pushing them out of school, what can government do, what can parents do, what can communities do, mm -hmm. and what can civil society do to be able to address some of those challenges. Okay. So it's a really, really important day for us. All right. In that regard, I know that Plan International did have a survey, a report that has come out to show a global study of the State of the World Girls uh, Report. It's been titled, Turning the World Around Girl and Young Women Activists Leading the Fight for Equality. Uh, could you give us the details, the outstanding things that came out in that particular report? Okay. Um, just like you said, it's, it's a global report. So it was a global study. So it was conducted among about 26 countries, of mm -hmm. course, interacting with um, thousands of girls from those very many countries. And um, in that study, we're looking at what are the key challenges girls face as they advocate for their rights and those other issues. So of course, reports indicated like they uh, experience things to do with abuse, mostly like online abuse and harassment. Uh, they have challenges to do with, you know, people don't believe in girls. They see these are young girls. They wouldn't even imagine yeah. that they would actually <laughs> start. Oh, oh, on that note, yeah. w we had, uh, you know, young ladies in the film industry recently here, and they shared with us that when they go into the bidding rooms uh, to bid for grants and money to cover, the, you know, their productions, if, 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 if they don't have a man on the team, it's very difficult for them to get funding. Yes. So someone puts them aside and tells them, you know, if you want to easily get through, just <laughs> get a guy on board, give him the leadership position, and everything will flow swiftly, which like is not a like exactly. which is so very, very uh, violating. Exactly. You're bringing it home. Yeah. So those are the issues girls face. So I think that the assumption that, you know, they are girls, just like I'd said earlier, they are girls, they can't move things. So it's difficult for people to, for people to believe in what they say. Mm -hmm. But we are saying, no, we don't have like to have a man or a boy around. We want to build these girls to be able to see them advocate for their own issues. So the report, just like I've said, was conducted among those very many countries. And uh, as Uganda, we went ahead to contextualize because we realized that the issues that uh, were identified in those very many countries, they closely relate with what is happening currently in our country. So. Mm -hmm. We realize that most of our girls advocate for issues around gender-based violence, issues of about um, forced marriages, uh, they are denied the right to education, they have issues to do with washed facilities in education, like in schools and other public spaces. Mm. So the girls would actually go into activism for such cases. Mm. So when you look at that report in details, you realize like uh, issues around gender-based violence and of course who are also relating with other existing reports, like there was um, violence against uh, children study that was conducted in 2018 and in that report it indicated like 35 percent of our girls have experienced sexual abuse compared to the boys who are actually just 17 mm -hmm. and I want to believe after this pandemic if we did another study which is actually happening very soon the figures would be higher than that so again from that study we also see like issues around education like I had mentioned already, we see our girls are able to complete P7 at least at around 53%. But then we only see 22% are able to enroll for second. And as they go higher, the numbers keep reducing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the study had a lot of issues, but we may not have all the details in here. And then when we see like what happens between, like we said, 53% complete P7, only 22% able to enroll for secondary mm -hmm. and then what are the key other issues around there the number of issues around forced marriages and then we say around 40 percent of our girls are forced into marriage before the age of 18. so uh, the report was a huge one but of course those are the key insights we can set around so for us as plan we look at those issues and we really feel 
if we are to talk about girls achieving girls' potential and all those things, we need to address most of those things. Gender-based violence, what are the issues around education, what are the issues around um, wash facilities, because one of the things that affect girls' enrollment and participation in schools is the issues of menstrual hygiene management. Mm -hmm. So most girls in our communities cannot afford sanitary pads, but also those ones who can afford the sanitary pads, in most cases those schools don't have like wash facilities in schools. There's no water in schools, so you'd imagine as a woman, if even yourself, Priscilla, if you're here and you know what it means, you have to change for after some time. So for girls in rural communities who cannot afford such facilities, they end up dropping from school. Mm -hmm. So we look at such issues and then we work, uh, we have our programs, our programming, but also working with different stakeholders to see that we're able to address such cases, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, let me turn to the activist herself. I know that you are trying your level best to change the stereotypes, yes. uh, to influence uh, the public opinion and also to influence policy. Yes. In that regard, how much striding have you taken? Uh, when we look at activism, this is a wide issue. Because with activism, we find a lot of challenges. Nevertheless, that we stand out as activists, but we still face a lot of challenges. Um, from the capacity building than with by plan, mm -hmm. yes, girls and young women uh, can now stand out and embrace themselves. Mm -hmm. And they are confident enough to speak about the issues really affecting them in their communities. And this has given us a picture that when we stand out as girls and young women with a collective voice, we shall really be heard because we have chances that we can even meet these policy makers. <coughs> uh, the last time we had an engagement with the Ministry of Gender, where he comes from, uh, we were influencing a poli uh, an em the employment policy that is being reviewed. We were given a chance to also give out our issues as girls and young women concerning the employment policy, and some of our recommendations have been taken up. And and uh, uh, with the help of the Ministry of Gender, we are still working on other policies that are coming up. But we thank the government of Uganda because has, it has really given us a platform through different ministries. And this is helping us as girls and young women to really influence globally. Okay. All right. Well, clearly activism is the way to go in order to get into the right space and allow girls their right to participation. That's going to bring, bring us into a break. We'll take a short breather. We're going to be returning shortly as, of course, we round up this conversation uh, highlighting the International Day of the Girl Child. Do stay with us.